Have you ever wondered what the future of transportation looks like when the sun itself becomes your primary energy source? Not something that supplements your range, not something that gives you a small boost, but a system so efficient that you may never need to plug in at all. Today, I stepped inside a place where that future is being carved into reality, one carbon fiber panel and one solar cell at a time. And what I discovered here goes far beyond a factory tour. It is the story of a radical idea, a decade-long pursuit of extreme efficiency, and a team determined to prove that mobility can be reimagined from the ground up. As I walked into the facility, the first thing I saw, literally written on the wall, was the phrase, every journey powered by the sun. And that simple sentence ended up framing everything I was about to witness. This wasn't just a motto, it was a philosophy driving every engineering decision, material choice, aerodynamic refinement, and production plan taking shape inside these walls. I've been following this vehicle for years, long before prototypes were polished and long before investors began circling. The excitement was already building, but today I wanted answers to questions that lingered in the minds of thousands. How close is this solar-powered EV to real production? How does it achieve these insane efficiency numbers? How is it engineered? And is it possible, truly possible, that an EV could run for weeks, months, maybe even years without plugging in? That's exactly what I was here to uncover. I began the tour standing beside the two people who ignited the entire idea. Two co-founders, two co-CEOs, one bold vision. When they started this journey, they weren't trying to build just another electric car. They were trying to answer one simple but profound question. How do you travel using the least amount of energy possible? That question led them down a rabbit hole of old aerodynamics textbooks, computational simulations, and forgotten research from aviation pioneers. What emerged was a realization that most modern vehicles, no matter how advanced, still waste the majority of their energy simply pushing air out of the way. So they asked, what if the shape of the vehicle was optimized first? What if the body sliced through the wind instead of fighting it? What if weight was minimized to the extreme? And what if the sun could contribute real, meaningful range not just decorative trickle charging. When they ran the first solar integration calculations using highly efficient Maxion cells, the result stunned them. They looked at each other and thought the same thing. Why stop at the roof? Why not cover the entire body in solar? That single moment changed everything. What began as a theoretical concept suddenly became a blueprint for a vehicle capable of harvesting 30 to 40 miles of energy from the sun every day, enough to handle the daily commute of millions without plugging in at all. Inside the factory, the first thing I was shown was the solar array covering the prototype. Not decorative appliques, not conceptual artwork, these were functional solar cells laid into ultra-thin glass, forming a lightweight yet durable photovoltaic skin. The manufacturing innovation required to make these cells flexible enough to contour to the body without microcracking is one of the company's biggest engineering achievements. Microcracking is the invisible enemy of solar efficiency. Even slight deformation can kill performance over time, but their process avoids that entirely, enabling the creation of automotive-grade solar surfaces that hold up under vibration, heat, flexing, debris impacts, everything a road-going vehicle endures. The polymer stack beneath the glass adds waterproofing, durability, and rigidity without piling on weight. The top layer, though thin, is real strengthened glass with remarkable scratch resistance and clarity. This wasn't just solar integration, this was solar reinvented for automotive use. And while the Gamma prototype uses a hybrid mix of grass and polymer as a test bed, the production intent version will use lightweight glass exclusively simply because it delivers a smoother finish, better aesthetics, superior durability, 
and a more consistent bond. Even on the cloudy day of the tour, we walked outside and saw the system generating power. That sight alone hinted at a future where the phrase range anxiety becomes a relic of the past. But the story didn't end there. The team revealed that their solar innovations are being applied beyond consumer vehicles. At airports, where electric ground equipment typically requires large, costly charging infrastructure, Uptera's solar system eliminates the need for frequent charging altogether. Utilities, logistics fleets, airport operations, massive industries could be transformed by this technology. And these are only the early applications they're allowed to talk about publicly. From there, the tour shifted into manufacturing, and what I saw next might be the most impressive part of the entire company. Most automakers build EVs using thousands of stamped metal parts welded together by complex robotic systems. Every weld, every seam, and every panel increases cost, weight, complexity, and failure points. Abdera said, let's not do that. Instead, they built one of the largest carbon fiber SMC body structures ever produced, a single-piece shell created in one press operation. A structure so rigid, so dimensionally stable, and so repeatable that alignment jigs, hammers, shims, and compensating robots become unnecessary. This body doesn't flex. It doesn't warp. It doesn't depend on temperature or humidity. It doesn't fatigue the way traditional stamped metal structures do. It's closer to aerospace construction than automotive, and yet, it reduces manufacturing cost dramatically. In many ways, it's the opposite of conventional EV production. Lighter, stronger, simpler, faster, more precise. And because the car is so light, most parts can be placed by human hands instead of heavy robotic arms. That means scaling to full production becomes faster and far more cost efficient. The interior space improvements, the aerodynamic refinements, the structural enhancements, everything built into the Gamma prototype reflects lessons learned from early alphas and betas. Headroom was increased, packaging space was optimized, the belly pan was reshaped for better battery accommodation, the tail was narrowed for cleaner airflow, even the door architecture was refined with smart carbon designs and elegant mechanical systems. And then, came the suspension. A beautifully engineered trailing link rear suspension that behaves like a four-wheel system, smooth, stable, predictable. With regenerative braking doing the heavy lifting, massive brake rotors become unnecessary, opening the door to future weight reductions. Every component was designed for efficiency and manufacturability, not just performance. At last, I stepped up to the fully assembled production intent chassis. It looked like something out of a clean, futuristic motorsports garage. Carbon fiber, aluminum structural members, reinforced safety cages, and aerospace grade castings. The assembly team had barely finished building it, and yet everything fit together with near perfect precision. No surprises, no misalignments, no last minute redesigns. The CAD models had translated to reality so accurately that it felt almost surreal. The doors opened smoothly. The gaps were consistent. The interior was noticeably more spacious. The seating position felt refined. Even without the final steering yoke, the ergonomics were comfortable and intuitive. The rear storage space stretched nearly seven feet, large enough for surfboards, bikes, camping setups, or long cargo. Everything hinted at a vehicle built not just for efficiency, but for real-world practicality. And this was only the beginning. Track testing, powertrain validation, and long-term durability studies were next. But if the initial assembly offered any clue, the team was on the right track. To bring this vehicle to market, the company is raising $60 million in a convertible note. This funding will finalize crash structures, airbags, ABS integration, high-volume casting tooling, and production equipment. Once production begins, the first goal is a run rate of 6,000 vehicles per year, scaling upward as demand grows. For comparison, 
Reaching the stage in a conventional automaker would typically cost half a billion dollars or more. Yet this team reached it around $100 million, a tiny fraction compared to legacy OEMs. Efficiency isn't just what the car is built for. Efficiency is how the company itself operates. They've already received interest from international investors, manufacturing partners, and strategic automotive groups, but their priority remains maintaining control of their mission to deliver as many solar-powered Apteras as possible over the next decade. And if they succeed, every journey truly will be powered by the sun.